oxidative phosphorylation is the culmination of all energy yielding metabolism in aerobic organisms. Let us now explore this crucial biochemical phenomenon up close and personal. All oxidative steps in the degradation of fats, carbohydrates, and proteins converge at this final stage of cellular respiration in which the energy of oxidation drives the synthesis of ATP. Simply stated, oxidative phosphorylation involves the reduction of oxygen to water, with electrons donated by oxidation of complex ma macromolecules carried by the universal electron carriers like NADH and FADH2. Phosphorylation for ATP synthesis is of two types. These are substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative or respiration linked phosphorylation. Let us now study each type and differentiate them in the next few slides. To start off, the first type of phosphorylation that we are going to study is substrate level phosphorylation. Substrate level phosphorylation is defined as the metabolic reaction that results in the formation of adenosine triphosphate or guanosine triphosphate by conversion of a higher energy substrate, whether phosphate group attached or not, into a lower energy product. And using some of the released chemical energy, the Gibbs free energy, to transfer a phosphoryl group to ADP or GDP from another phosphorylated compound. Unlike oxidative phosphorylation, oxid oxidation and phosphorylation are not coupled in the process of substrate level phosphorylation, and the active intermediates are most often gained in the course of oxidation processes in catabolism. Most ATP is generated by oxidative phosphorylation in aerobic or anaerobic respiration, while substrate level phosphorylation provides a quicker, less efficient source of ATP independent of external electron acceptors. This is the case in human erythrocytes, which have no mitochondria, and in oxygen-depleted muscles. Additionally, substrate level phosphorylation occurs through the direct cleavage of high-energy bonds, and then coupling this to the synthesis of ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. This process involves soluble enzymes and chemical intermediates, for example, like 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate in glycolysis. Let's illustrate this with tangible examples. Substrate level phosphorylation exists in glycolysis. In the oxidation of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and phosphoenolpyruvate, which we learned are high-energy compounds. The energy release from the oxidation of these two intermediates are higher than what is needed for the phosphorylation of ADP to produce ATP. The ATP yield might be very low, but this is a lot quicker and can happen in cells without mitochondria like the red blood cells or even in oxygen-depleted tissues. Oxidative phosphorylation, on the other hand, involves the reduction of oxygen to water with electrons donated by NADH and FADH2. This type of phosphorylation involves membrane-bound enzymes and transmembrane gradients of protons and occurs through oxidation of substrates in the electron transport chain. It is also known as the electron transport linked phosphorylation. This involves the transfer of reducing equivalents in the chain, which produces energy and is captured via phosphorylation of ADP and inorganic phosphate to ATP. Thus, basically, this involves the coupling of biologic oxidation or simply respiration with phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation is the culmination of energy yielding metabolism in aerobic organisms. Oxidative phosphorylation begins with the entry of electrons into the respiratory chain. Most of these electrons arise from the action of dehydrogenases that collect electrons from catabolic pathways and funnel them into universal electron acceptors. Nicotinamide nucleotides NAD or NADP or flavin nucleotides FMN or FAD. In addition to NAD and flavoproteins, three other types of electron-carrying molecules function in the respiratory chain. These are ubiquinone, cytochromes, and the different ions for proteins. 
Oxidative phosphorylation involves the process wherein electrons pass to a series of membrane-bound carriers which is known as the electron transport chain. The mitochondrial respiratory chain consists of a series of sequentially acting electron carriers, most of which are integral proteins with prosthetic groups capable of accepting and donating either one or two electrons. Three types of electron transfers occur in oxidative phosphorylation. We have studied this previously but it's worth mentioning again. Electrons are transferred as electrons, as hydrogen atoms, and as hydride ions, which carry two electrons. The electron transport chain, abbreviated as ETC, is the overall reaction catalyzed by the mitochondrial respiratory chain, where electrons move from NADH, succinate, or some other primary electron donor through flavoproteins, ubiquinone, iron, sulfur proteins, and cytochromes, and finally to the ultimate acceptor of electrons, molecular oxygen. In this illustration, this blue arrow showed the path of electron transport from NADH to oxygen. As electrons pass through the chain, protons are pumped from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space, thereby establishing an electrochemical potential gradient across the inner mitochondrial membrane. This electrochemical potential will now be harnessed in the phosphorylation of ADP to ATP within the mitochondria. Before we dive straight into the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation, it is prudent for us to at least revisit the very important organelle where these processes will be occurring, in the mitochondria. The mitochondria is a double-membraned organelle where the electron transport chain is housed and is responsible for energy production, earning it the moniker of being the powerhouse of the cell. The outer mitochondrial membrane is readily permeable to small molecules and ions, which move freely through transmembrane channels formed by a family of integral membrane proteins called porins. The inner membrane, on the other hand, is impermeable to most small molecules and ions, including protons or hydrogen ions. Protons are one of the few species that can cross this membrane and they can only do so through specific transporters. The inner membrane bears the components of the respiratory chain and the ATP synthase. Moving on, the mitochondrial matrix enclosed by the inner membrane contains vital enzyme systems like the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, the citric acid cycle, the fatty acid beta-oxidation pathway, and the pathways of amino acid oxidation. These are almost all the pathways of fuel oxidation except glycolysis, which of course takes place in the cytosol. The selectively permeable inner membrane segregates the intermediates and enzymes of cytosolic metabolic pathways from those of metabolic processes occurring in the matrix. However, specific transporters carry pyruvate, fatty acids, and amino acids or their alpha keto derivatives into the matrix for access to the machinery of the citric acid cycle. ADP and inorganic phosphates are specifically transported into the matrix as newly synthesized ATP is transported out. Here is an image that encapsulates the processes in the electron transport chain happening within the mitochondria. The yellow arrows show the path of electron transport from NADH to oxygen. As electrons pass through the chain, Protons are pumped from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space, thereby establishing an, an electrochemical potential gradient across the inner mitochondrial membrane. The positive and negative charges on the membrane denote the membrane potential. The electrochemical difference on both sides of the inner mitochondrial membrane drives the protons into the matrix through a pore in the ATP synthase which uses the energy to form ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. The electron carriers of the respiratory chain are organized into membrane-embedded supramolecular complexes that can be physically separated. Gentle treatment of the inner mitochondrial membrane with detergents allows the resolution of four unique electron carrier complexes each capable of catalyzing electron transfer through a portion of the chain. Complexes 1 and 2 catalyze electron transfer to ubiquinone from two different electron donors, NADH via complex 1 
and succinate via complex 2. Complex 3 carries electrons from the reduced ubiquinone to cytochrome C, and complex 4 completes the sequence by transferring electrons from cytochrome C to molecular oxygen to yield water. We are now ready to look more closely into the different complexes of the electron transport chain. The first is complex 1, also called NADH ubiquinone oxidoreductase or simply NADH dehydrogenase. NADH dehydrogenase is a large enzyme composed of 42 different polypeptide chains, including an FMN containing flavoprotein and at least 6 iron sulfur centers. High resolution electron microscopy shows complex 1 to be L shaped with one arm of the L in the membrane and the other extending into the matrix. Two processes happen in complex 1. The first is the exergonic transfer of a pair of electrons from NADH to ubiquinone to reduce it to ubiquinol. The flow of electrons from the higher free energy level intermediates to that with a much lower free energy level will yield energy that can be used to do some useful work. Thus, the second process is the endergonic transfer of four protons from the matrix to the intermembrane space. Complex 1 is therefore a proton pump driven by the energy of electron transfer, and the reaction it catalyzes is vectorial. It moves protons in a specific direction from the matrix to the intermembrane space. As a consequence, the matrix becomes negatively charged with the departure of protons. The intermembrane space, on the other hand, becomes positive because of the influx of protons. To emphasize the vectorial nature of the process, the overall reaction is often written with subscripts that indicate the location of the protons. P is for the positive side of the in inner membrane or the intermembrane space. N is for the negative side, which is the matrix. Ubiquinol or QH2, the fully reduced form of ubiquinone, then diffuses in the inner mitochondrial membrane from complex 1 to complex 3 where it is oxidized back to ubiquinone in a process that also involves the outward movement of protons. Moving on now to complex 2. Complex 2, also known as succinate dehydrogenase, is considered to be the only membrane-bound enzyme in the citric acid cycle. Although smaller and simpler than complex 1, it contains 5 prosthetic groups of 2 types and 4 different protein subunits. The effect of each of these electron transferring enzymes is to contribute to the pool of reduced ubiquinone or ubiquinol or QH2 from all these reactions. The next respiratory complex, complex 3, also called cytochrome BC1 complex or ubiquinone cytochrome C oxidoreductase, couples the transfer of electrons from ubiquinol or QH2 to cytochrome C with the vectorial transport of protons from the matrix to the intermembrane space. Based on the structure of complex 3 and detailed biochemical studies of the redox reactions, a reasonable model has been proposed for the passage of electrons and protons through complex 3. The net equation for the redox reactions are shown here. Although the path of the electrons through this segment of the respiratory chain is complicated, the net effect of the transfer is simple. Ubiquinol or QH2 is oxidized back to ubiquinone or Q, and two molecules of cytochrome C are reduced. At the same time, four protons are pumped from the matrix into the intermembrane space. Cytochrome C is a soluble protein of the intermembrane space. After each single heme accepts an electron from complex 3, cytochrome C moves to complex 4 to donate the electron to a binuclear copper center. In the final step of the respiratory chain, complex 4, also called cytochrome C oxidase, carries electrons from cytochrome C to molecular oxygen and reducing it to water. It contains cytochromes A and A3 and the oxygen binding site. 
A whole oxygen molecule or O2 must accept 4 electrons to be reduced to 2 moles of water. Bound copper ions in the cytochrome oxygen complex facilitate the collection of the 4 electrons and the reduction of the oxygen molecule. To continue, for every 4 electrons passing through this complex, the enzyme consumes 4 substrate hydrogen from the matrix or the enzyme in converting an O2 molecule to 2 moles of water. It also uses the energy of this redox reaction to pump one proton outward into the intermembrane space or the P-side for each electron that passes through, adding to the electrochemical potential produced by a redox-driven proton transport through complexes 1 and 3. The overall reaction catalyzed by complex 4 is shown here. This 4-electron reduction of an O2 molecule involves redox centers that carry only one electron at a time, and it must occur without the release of incompletely reduced intermediates such as hydrogen peroxide or hydroxyl-free radicals, very reactive species that would damage cellular components. The intermediates remain tightly bound to the complex until completely converted to water. This slide shows a summary of the flow of electrons and protons through the four complexes of the respiratory chain. Electrons reach ubiquinone through complexes 1 and 2. Ubiquinol serves as a mobile carrier of electrons and protons. It passes electrons to complex 3, which passes them to another mobile connecting link cytochrome C. Complex 4 then transfers electrons from reduced cytochrome C to oxygen. Electron flow through complexes 1, 3, and 4 is accompanied by proton flow from the matrix to the intermembrane space. Here is an animated image showing the flow of electrons and the corresponding vectorial translocation of protons from the matrix to the intermembrane space in complexes 1, 3, and 4. The transfer of two electrons from NADH through the respiratory chain to molecular oxygen can be written with this equation. This net reaction is highly exergonic and the standard free energy change calculated is appro approximately negative 220 kJ per mole of NADH. Much of this energy is used to pump protons out of the matrix. For each pair of electrons transferred to oxygen, 4 protons are pumped out by complex 1, 4 by complex 3, and 2 by complex 4 for a total of 10 protons. The electrochemical energy inherent in this difference in proton concentration and separation of charge represents a temporary conservation of much of the energy of electron transfer. This forms the basis for the proton motive force. Because the transfer of two electrons from NADH to oxygen is accompanied by the outward pumping of 10 hydrogen ions, roughly 200 of the 220 kilojoules released by oxidation of a mole of NADH is conserved in the proton gradient. The energy stored in such a gradient, termed the proton motive force, has two components. First, the chemical potential energy due to the difference in concentration of a chemical species, the hydrogen ions, in the two regions separated by the membrane. Second, the electrical potential energy that results from the separation of charge when a proton moves across the membrane without a counter ion. Thank you for watching this episode in this playlist. Check out the other videos in this playlist and please do subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified of new video episodes that will be regularly uploaded.